So I love the fact that Lomography is still coming out with cameras and lenses that are promoting film photography and their Sprocket Rocket is a really, really fun camera. If you've ever seen how when people shoot photos and they, they post them, you have images over the sprockets of over the sprockets of the film, this is a camera that you can do it a bunch of different ways. You can run it across a medium format camera, you can do it over a Holga, but this is a really cool, it's a panoramic sprocket rocket by Lomography. And we're gonna go play around, shoot some photos, and then we're gonna use a scanner to show you how to scan it in. This is another thing by Lomography that they use so you can actually see the sprockets. And yeah, we're gonna show you how to do that, what the results are, we'll see what we get, it should be fun. Pretty little plastic camera. So you can focus from if you're up close versus far away. There's sort of those two different settings right there. This is here, this is covering your sprockets, but if you want to see your sprocket holes, you remove this, and now this is your frame and your sprockets will be showing through. Loading the Lomography 400 speed film, which is a color negative film and it is awesome. So as you see, the holes are actually over where this frame is open. So I'm gonna feed it now into this little slot. I like how the back goes on, it all snaps. Back's there, so then we wind it, and we are now at frame one. Let's shoot this truck. We're on the close setting versus the mountain setting. I feel like we're shooting it pretty close here. So we're on the N. Frame one. So the different settings that you have on here with the focus, you either have infinity, which is stuff you're shooting far away, which would probably what it's doing is it's bringing down your, I don't know how it does it, if it's adjusting your aperture or what, but the focus, and then it, the close range focus is 0.6 meter to one meter. 0.6 meters is roughly 1.9 feet, so almost two feet. So you should, if you're two feet away, you should still be in focus. And then up to about three feet, three inches is what one meter equals. So 0.6 to one meter. So I can get two feet. We're just gonna test the focus on this. Uh, I feel like I'm about two feet away here. But that's sort of like the two, the two guides for focus. So if I was gonna shoot like more of a scenic or like landscape or something further away, I'd be moving this up to the mountain setting, infinity. And then if I'm shooting something close range, I'm moving it there. So. Let's go drive and find some more stuff to shoot. I drive past these cars pretty much every day on my way to work and I figured three old Porsches in a row. Thought it would look cool on a panoramic. Now, I'm gonna be putting it on mountain setting. Austin Healy. So now to rewind it, I'm just literally rewinding it the opposite direction. It should be rolling it right back into the film spool. No batteries in this camera, just all manual, which is pretty sweet as well. What do you think, should I put a roll of black and white in now or keep it colored? So I'm gonna load in a roll of the Lady Grey Lomography. It's another 400 speed film, black and white. Let's go shoot that same car in black and white. All right, on to the next spot. Shooting one a little bit further away, pulled at the Infinity, and now I'm coming in at more of that two foot range to just hopefully get the car. Let's 
I'm gonna do one more again at the infinity setting and I'm gonna try and get both of these trucks in the same frame. Putting it on back on the 0.6 to one meter setting so I'm a little bit closer. last frame on this guy. I think we'll throw some color back in here. Head down to the beach a little bit. Little hazy in the sky. We've got just one city over is Irvine. I think it's one city over. Close enough, but the, there's bad fires going on and all of this, like the wind is literally coming straight across from Irvine over to us. And so it's like, it's gone back to being like California's on fire again. Uh, but yeah, it's super, super hazy. And it's gonna be interesting to see if we're seeing an orange tint on the photos as well. Some nice blues down here and still, we'll still get some shots. I'm gonna shoot it sort of straight on the pier this way. Then I wanna come and get something like basically perpendicular to the pier so it's the whole width. I was thinking I wanted to ask those parents if they'd let them have their kids chase these birds so the birds could fly up in the air. Hi, if I wanted to get a photo of the birds flying, could I talk them into chasing the birds so they fly? Sure. Is that all right? I won't, I won't shoot photos of them, just the birds. Yeah, that's fine. Would you guys want to chase the birds and make them fly? So you're gonna come right here. And then when I say go, you chase those birds. Why I dove on the ground for Nick who thought I fell is because I was, I was shooting it, it was like at the ground, I was still getting the kid, so I wanted to get up and get just the sky and the birds, so we'll see if it came through. That was a dive, not a fall. This is sort of what I was hoping with being at the beach is that out of the haze, we're still gonna get some of these turquoise blues. I don't know what the shutter speed is. I would guess, I know on a Holga, it's one one hundredth. But this lens is, it's a 30 millimeters wide, so it's a 30 millimeter. And it's about 10 point, what's it? 10.8 is the f-stop. So you need a little bit of light or a lot of bit of light when you're shooting with this. It's not gonna do low, good in low light unless you put it on a tripod and then use the bulb setting for longer exposure. But really you need, I'm shooting most of this front lit. I think if I shot back lit, all of it would be pretty underexposed. So I'm trying to get as much light as I can because I'm not in control of the light. The light is. Eh? Put in one more roll of color. 400 speed lamography film. What they have on here to shut the back. Don't think I got what I wanted with that little kid. I just, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to scare his birds away. So now I'm going to go scare my birds. I had to ask permission, you know? So I'm going to shoot the pier on both sides, just to sort of show that this side is backlit. So the pier is basically going to be a silhouette because the sun is setting over the ocean and I'm basically shooting into the sun. So this is backlit, but I can't control the exposure on this, so it's going to expose for the, I mean, it's gonna be a silhouette. The other side should be front lit, then we'll get the whole pier. Just walks back from the other side of the pier. Again, because I can't control this 30 millimeters, and so I wanted to get as much of the pier as possible without being at a really sharp angle. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be, this is more front lit. The sun's behind me now, shooting at the pier. So, I think it should look pretty nice.
So that was the last frame. We're gonna go now take the film, get it processed. We're gonna take the negatives and then scan them with the tool that Lomography has so you can see the sprockets and play around. So you'd use a flatbed scanner versus a typical machine that just sort of sucks it and is looking for that 35 millimeter frame. Um, you would, if you're at a lab, you say, I, I would need a flatbed scan because you wanna be able to see the sprockets. But that's what we're gonna go do, show you how we do it, and excited to see the results. Just got the film processed at the uh, local lab, and now I'm gonna show you how to scan it so you can see the sprockets, which would be these little holes in the film. And with the camera that we're using, the sprocket rocket, it should be exposing over those holes. So you can see the image. We're using this tool, it's the Digitalizer, and it is really great because it this is magnetized. It's a way to get your film flat across the surface. You feed it through there, then you open her up, feed the film in, we'll show you in a second. So, I was thinking that you had to be on each number, which obviously you didn't because there could have been another frame right in here. So I wound it too far. I was going from the one, there was a dot, and then it went to three. So the dot you could have also been exposing here. And like if you wanted to do something that I didn't do, which would have been really cool, if you look at these images on the case, if you didn't wind it quite as far, you could have just had one really long image. Like my image stopped here, there's a space here, so it went there. But if you just wound it to the dot and kept shooting, you can get these really, really long images. Or like when I was shooting the pier, I could have shot here, not wound it all the way, might have had some overlap here, and then got across, so you end up with a really, really long uh, panoramic image instead of just like this long. So another option of what you can do, this is, this is one way to make sure you don't have any overlap on your images by having the space, but the overlap could be a really cool intentional choice that you're making. So what we're trying to do is get the film flat, and this tool really helps with that. This is magnetized, this is the metal sh metal sheet that's in there. So you got that in, I'm gonna feed the film through. Shiny side up, we're gonna get it where we're able to get two of these images. If you could have gotten three images, if you spaced it out a little differently. These have the little holes, you get this in there. So now this is stuck on there, we're closing this up. I can cut the negatives here. Now I remove this and the metal plank just fall off. Now we have a nice flat film plane. So here's a little duster. Blow off the little dust guys, dust bunnies. We've got two images right there that we're gonna scan. So this is the Epson Perfection V850 Pro. Great scanner. So there's the scanning process for you. That was fun just to sort of see how it goes and see how these came out. Scanning takes a long time. It's a time consuming part. Same with processing your own film, which is typically why I choose to use a lab. Um, but there's a lot of killer like self-development stuff. Cinestill's making some really cool self-development stuff. And then the Lomography making really, really great tools to be able to scan stuff that is not your standard, just 35 millimeter frame that is evenly spaced. This is if you're wanting to be experimental and do something different, you can use these cool cameras like the Lomography sprocket rocket and get experimental with how you're exposing you can get those really long frames where you can just shoot standard and yeah so it's really fun but hopefully that was an encouragement to you to get creative to add some tools to your tool bag to your arsenal and have fun with it so film photography is amazing there's so many things you can do with it there's so many processes you can use and we're just trying to start to bring some of those to light for you so you can be more creative Thanks for being part of this community. We sell all this stuff in our shop down below. We have killer cameras. We've got stuff like the Sprocket Rocket. We've got the Digitalizer, lots of film, other cameras to play with. We're here as a resource for you. So leave comments down below. We'd love to hear from you if you have any questions, any thoughts, stuff you want to hear about. But thanks for being a part of this community and we'll see you on the next one.